Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. On Tuesday, President Barack Obama delivered his fifth State of the Union address exactly one day after Governor John DeYoung's State of the Territory speech. News 2's Shanika Robinson caught up with a few public officials to get their feedback in regards to the State of the Union and how the Virgin Islands will or can be affected by the President's decisions. President Barack Obama delivered his fifth State of the Union address on Tuesday in Washington, D.C., and as a result, several public officials in the Virgin Islands were willing to give their opinion in regards to the address. I feel very good about it and very proud of our president. He gave a very strong and forward-looking State of the Union, I thought, and his key principles were opportunity, action, and optimism, and, and he really captured it all in State of the Union last night. Many issues that were discussed during the president's address are very relatable to the community of the Virgin Islands. One of the things that um, jumped out for me is um, him encouraging the Senate Congress uh, in regards to uh, energy policy, um, which is would be able to create jobs, um, reducing pollution. Those are some of the things that we uh, in the territory also face. Raising the minimum wage would be something of interest to everyone, everywhere. And for the 1,700 or so people in the Virgin Islands who have lost their emergency unemployment benefits, our support to reinstate those uh, benefits are very important to the territory. During his address, the president mentioned that in order to build real lasting economic security, he will work with Congress and act on his own to expand opportunity for all so that every American can get ahead and have a shot at creating a better life for their children. Where the president was also talking about, you know, this is time to like roll up our sleeves just like in the territory and work collectively. So, you know, I hope that was inspirational for a lot of my colleagues also, who I'm sure that listened um, for even the executive branch that we both need to come together to work collectively to see that the quality of life for the people of the Virgin Islands is improved. Shaniqua Robinson, News 2. Meanwhile, President Barack Obama is in the middle of a two-day, four-state road trip to promote the economic ideas in his State of the Union address. The president is talking his message directly to the American people, pushing more economic opportunities for all Americans. Danielle Nottingham reports from Capitol Hill. President Obama launched a new retirement savings program at a western Pennsylvania steel plant. So you can open an account with as little as $25. You can contribute as little as $5 at a time. The program, called MyRA, is meant to be a starter account for workers who don't have any retirement savings. Earlier, the president walked aisles with pallets of paper towels and supersized chips at Costco, where employees earn an average of $20.89 an hour. He stopped at the suburban Maryland store to call for a higher minimum wage. It's time to give America a raise. To raise the minimum wage, the president needs Congress, but he can raise wages for federal contract workers without lawmakers. He promised to do that and take other actions on his own. When the president moves forward and says, I'm going to issue executive orders, regardless of what Congress does, really all it shows is a failure of leadership. Republicans argue raising the minimum wage will cost the country jobs, and they aren't endorsing my RA because they say private banks already offer workers plans to save for retirement. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Turn our attention back at home. After five years, Crime Stoppers USVI is celebrating their accomplishments. The international volunteer organization works with various communities and local police in making arrests and recovering stolen property. The organization was recognized on Wednesday during a celebratory press conference on St. Thomas. Report your anonymous information and help make your community safe. If your information leads to an arrest, recovery of stolen property, illegal drugs, or guns, you can earn a reward of up to $2,500 paid in cash. Crime Stoppers USVI is celebrating five years of accomplishments. To date, we have received 2,007 anonymous tips. You, the community, are responsible 
for taking back these communities in the Virgin Islands from those who wish to harm us. A celebratory press conference was held on Wednesday at the Richard Colwood Police Station on St. Thomas. Crime Stoppers is a tool. They, we, we get information of situations after they occur, mostly, but we also get information from tipsters who hear of a crime uh, being planned and we, you know, we respond to the situations deterring crimes. So it's a win-win situation. We've received 2,007 tips, as was mentioned earlier. This has resulted in 201 arrests. 25 refugees have been caught. 98 illegal weapons have been taken off the streets. We don't know who you are. We don't know where you live. We don't know where you work. We don't know what sex you are. We don't care. We got a tip from you that says an individual committed a crime and we will investigate until we can make an arrest and get that person prosecuted. So continue to, su to support Crime Stoppers, support the Virgin Islands Police Department, basically support each other. The only way we're going to stop crime in this territory is working together, using tools and, and organizations such as Crime Stoppers, along with VIPD. Founders Alan Brown and Senator Judy Buckley were both in attendance. Well, Public Works Commissioner Daryl Smalls met recently with representatives of both ferry boat franchises, Transportation Services, and Varlock Ventures to discuss the timeline for placing the two recently acquired ferry boats for the Cruise Bay Red Hook route into service. The discussion centered on insurance policies for the new ferries, the management service agreement, and the final inspection and certification requirements which must be completed prior to the maiden voyages of Red Hook 1 and Cruise Bay 1. The department and operators are committed to completing this project in a safe but timely manner. The U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Tourism made a quick road trip this past weekend to Miami, Florida to get the word out about the territory and to inform Virgin Islanders living abroad that they can be part of the USVI ambassadors team. News 2's correspondent Natafa Romain files this report. It was game time for the Department of Tourism this weekend as the team set their sights on the Miami area, spreading the word about the territory as a top-notch destination, as well as getting the word out to Virgin Islanders living in the area about the USBI Ambassadors program. On Saturday night, newly appointed VI Ambassadors were treated to a night out on the town. They were given an update on some of the initiatives happening in the territory by agency heads, as well as some much-needed face time with representatives of the VI government. I think one of the fantastic things that we saw last night were Virgin Islanders connecting with Virgin Islanders that have been living in Florida for years and didn't know that their friend or family member was here as well. So it's a uh, tool for us certainly to promote tourism, but it's also a tool for business development and for contacts and networking of Virgin Islanders within any state. It was good to get the two generations of ambassadors together. And I think that's what we saw last night. We had a new generation, successful Virgin Islanders who are in their 30s. And then we had the, the godfathers, so to speak, who are in the 50s and 60s who um, pioneered this for us. On Sunday, all roads led to the American Airlines Arena where the territory's culture was on full display for fans who came out to see the Heat take on cruising big man Tim Duncan and the Spurs. Thousands of fans were able to take in some of what the VI has to offer. The halftime show came from none other than the awesome Caribbean ritual dancers who dazzled fans with their talent. An invaluable opportunity for the Department of Tourism. I think we rocked. Virgin Islanders had an incredible time. The networking was good. Information on the program was great. Empowering Virgin Islanders to sell home was an incredible opportunity. USVI ambassadors who came out to the game were also given a special little treat. Some FaceTime with the territory's biggest ambassador, Tim Duncan, who took time out to chat it up with his fellow VI ambassadors. It's off the main news too. Now, to sign up to become a USVI ambassador, you can log on to their website at www.usviambassadors.com. Keeping our eye on the economy, the Senate could vote as early as today to delay huge premium increases for the federal flood insurance program. In other news, wine grape growers in Napa Valley, California, are taking steps to deal with a severe drought. They're planning for a smaller crop and pruning earlier than usual. It's too soon to know if the drought will affect wine prices. 
This is the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, NASDAQ, S&P all down. The Dow 189, NASDAQ 46, S&P 18. Interested in the medical profession? Well, Parsons interested in attending medical school through a joint program offered by UVI and Boston University are invited to a public presentation from 6 to 7 p.m. on Thursday, January 30th. The session will take place in room T101 of the UVI Teacher Education Building on the St. Thomas campus with a video conference link to the Great Hall on the Albert Sheen campus on St. Croix. Dr. Samantha Kaplan, director of the Boston University Early Medical School Selection Program, will make the presentation. She will also interview potential applicants for the program. Well, here's an update on a case. A Hines County jury is scheduled to hear opening arguments on Wednesday in the trial of a woman charged in Jackson, Mississippi, with helping arrange the unlicensed buttocks injections that prosecutors say killed St. Croix native Karima Gordon in 2012. A jury was chosen Monday for the trial of Natasha Stewart of suburban Memphis, Tennessee. The trial was postponed Tuesday when snow and ice kept some jurors at home. Stewart, an adult entertainer also known as Pebbles the Model, has pleaded not guilty to charges including murder and the death of Karima Gordon. Prosecutors say Gordon paid Stewart $200 for a referral to the person who administered the injections at a house in Jackson in 2012. Authorities say Gordon died from blood clots in her lungs days after being injected with the silicone by Tracy Lynn Garner. Be sure to comment too to keep you updated. Royal Caribbean's Explorer of the Seas, on which hundreds of passengers and crew members fell ill, is back in the New Jersey port it departed from last week, Bayonne, shortly before 2 p.m. on Wednesday. After cutting short a 10-day cruise after more than 600 passengers and crew members experienced vomiting and diarrhea, the cruise line says most guests who fell ill were up and about as the ship headed to port. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention boarded the ship during its U.S. Virgin Islands port call, but hasn't confirmed the cause of the outbreak. The latest numbers of those sickened aboard the Explorer of the Seas is 630 passengers out of 3,050 and 54 crew members. The ship's doctor said the symptoms were consistent with norovirus. They recommended that people who still have symptoms be housed in nearby hotels or seen at medical facilities. Royal Caribbean is providing all guests a 50% refund of their cruise fares and an additional 50% future cruise credit. It's also reimbursing airline charge fees and accommodation for guests who had to change plans for traveling home. Stricken guests who were confined to their staterooms are also being provided a credit of one future cruise day for each day of confinement. The ship will undergo a third sanitation. Explorer of the Seas is on track to depart at its originally scheduled time Friday afternoon on its next cruise, a nine-night trip with port calls in Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Well, states in the south are still trying to recover from a rare snow and ice storm that brought cities to a standstill. In Georgia, some kids at school are still stuck at school because they couldn't get home. Coem has the latest. Traffic is still at a standstill on some Atlanta highways this morning. Some cars have been stuck on snow-covered roadways since yesterday. About two inches of snow turned interstates into parking lots as people tried to get home. Some students and teachers are still stuck at school. We have, are sending state troopers, uh, members of our Georgia State Patrol, to each of the schools where children are still there. And it is anticipated that in some of those schools, uh, some of the children will probably spend the night there. The storm slams states from Texas to North Carolina. At least six states in the south are under states of emergency. I thought I'd move further south to get away from the snow, but they followed me down, I guess. Across Alabama, vehicles flipped on the slick roads and people abandoned their cars. People were blocking the intersection and getting out of their cars and walking. This is weather that may not cause such problems up north, but in Birmingham, Alabama, the conditions proved to be too much for drivers. 
And the thing about driving around in here is, is people down south don't know how to drive. Officials in the hardest hit areas are telling people to stay home this morning so crews can keep clearing the roads. Co M for CBS News. Well, of course, a lot warmer in our neck of the woods. Stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.